Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Gaming. And we're going to continue on with our third person cover shooter. Today I want to start delving into AI. So we already have a enemy character that we can shoot at and damage and destroy. But it's no fun if the enemy character doesn't shoot back at us or do anything. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start implementing our AI. And before we get started, I want to break down how exactly I want to set up our AI. I want the AI to have three basic states. The first state is it's going to be guarding a set position. The second state is the AI is going to go ahead and patrol between two different points that we can set. And the third state is going to be when the enemy detects the player's presence and enters a combat state. Now, I also want to make our AI as multifunctional as possible. So I'm going to have three different enemy types. There's going to be an assault type, which basically is going to just run towards the character shooting at our character. The second type is going to be the AI that tries and finds a place behind cover and intermittently pops up and starts shooting at our player. And the last type is going to be the character with the heavy weapon that is going to try to stay at range from our character and fire at our character while keeping its distance. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to create all the necessary components for our AI and connect them up so that we have a basic framework to operate with. So I'm going to go into our enemy characters folder and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder AI. And we'll put all of the components for our AI within this folder so we can keep them in one neat place. And I'm going to open up the AI folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and go to blueprint class. And we're going to search for AI controller. And we'll select the AI controller. And I'm going to call this enemy AI underscore controller. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to artificial intelligence and I'm going to select behavior tree and I'm going to call this enemy AI underscore behavior tree. Next, I'm going to right click. We're going to go to artificial intelligence and we're going to select blackboard and I'm going to call this enemy AI underscore blackboard. And these are going to be the main necessary components for our AI. But while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and under blueprints, I'm going to select enumeration and I'm going to call this combat status underscore enum. And what this is going to be is it's going to be our combat states as guard, patrol, or in combat. So I'm going to double click and open this up. And I'm going to click on new three times. And the first enumerator is going to be guard. The second enumerator is going to be patrol. And the third enumerator is going to be combat. And if you're unfamiliar with enumerators, it's basically a list. Behind the scenes, it's just a series of numbers, zero through the length of the list. But we can add labels to them so that we can recognize them easily. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we can close out of our enumerator. And I'm going to right click. And we're going to go to blueprints again and create a new enumeration. And I'm going to call this combat type underscore enum. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this enumerator. And once again, I'm going to add three new enumerators. And the first one is going to be assault. The second one is going to be cover. And the third one is going to be heavy. And this will represent the three different types of enemies that we're going to face in the game. So I'll go ahead and save and close out of that enumerator. And now we're going to have to go ahead and connect up all of our AI elements. So we're going to have to go into our base enemy character. 
And then in class defaults, underneath pawn, there is a selection for the AI controller class. I'm going to select the drop down and I'm going to select the enemy AI controller that we created. That will set it up so that this enemy will automatically use the AI controller that we have established. Now, while I'm in here as well, I want to set up a couple different things like our enemy character's ability to see and perceive our player. So in the component section, I'm going to go ahead and click on add component. And we're going to search for pawn sensing. And if we compile it and we go into the viewport and we select pawn sensing, you're going to go ahead and see that there are these three different colored circles that now surround our character. The green one is going to represent the vision. If we go over to the details pane at the right over here, I'm going to set the hearing threshold here to 1000. And this is going to be his ability to hear through objects. So if you're on the other side of the wall and within 1000 centimeters of the enemy, he's going to be able to hear any noise that you make. Next, I'm going to go to the line of sight hearing threshold. I'm going to set this to 2000. And this is going to be his range of hearing when there's no obstructions in the way. Finally, I'm going to go to the sight radius here. I'm going to set this to 2000 as well. So that's going to give him a 2000 centimeter or a 20 meter vision cone. And then for peripheral vision angle, I'm going to set this to 55. And that's going to give him a sight cone that's going to be in front of him. So we can go ahead and compile this. And I'm going to go back to the event graph now. And I'm going to click on our pawn sensing. I'm going to right click on that. We're going to add event. And we're going to add on pawn C. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and right click on it and add on here noise. So these events are going to fire when something triggers either his sight or his hearing. And we're going to need to add in some variables to account for some stuff as well. So under our variables here, I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this combat status. And for the variable type, we're going to set it to our combat status enumerator. Then I'm going to go ahead and add another variable. I'm going to set it to combat type. And then for the type of variable, we're going to set it to our combat type enumerator. And we're going to go ahead and make these public by clicking on the little eye to the right of them. And we're going to compile. And then for the combat status, I'm going to set the default for right now to guard. And the combat type, I'm going to set to assault as well. So I'm going to leave that at its defaults. But one thing you'll notice is if we go back to our map here, and if we click on our enemy character, we can see his sight radius and hearing radius. And then as well, if we go over to the details pane, under default, we can now see his combat status and his combat type variables, and we can actually set those. So this is going to make it very convenient when we start building our worlds and dropping enemies in place. We can simply drag out the enemy character, and we can set his combat status to be guard or patrol. Or if we even want them to start out knowing where the player character is, we can set them straight to combat. And then for combat type, we can set them to an assault type, we can set them to the cover type, and we can set them to the heavy type. And one thing I want to eventually take care of is based on what we set this variable, it's going to determine what kind of weapon the enemy has equipped. So back in our base enemy character blueprint, we're now going to have to react to on seeing and on hearing things. And so from our on see pawn here, the first thing I want to do is I want to check our combat status. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get our combat status. And we're going to go ahead and drag off from that and search for equals. And we want to check to see if we're in the combat status. Now I want this to be false, so I'm going to drag off and I'm going to select not. And then we're going to go ahead and put in a branch. And we'll connect that up to our pawn sensing. So the very first thing it's, this is going to do is it's going to check our combat status. And if we're in combat already, we don't really need to do anything. But if our combat status is not combat, we can go ahead and then continue on. So what I want to do is we want to drag off from our pawn. 
and we want to go ahead and cast to our 3P player character. And if we have sensed our 3P player character, we want to go ahead and set our combat status to combat. And essentially this is going to make it really easy. We can just actually copy and paste this for our on here noise pawn sensing. So I'm going to copy this in place down here. And we're going to connect up our instigator to the object that we're casting to our 3P player character. So at this point, if our enemy hears something and they're not already in the combat status, they're going to go ahead and flip over to the combat status. But one thing I want to do too is I want to get a reference to our 3P player character. So from our as 3P player character, I'm going to go ahead and promote to a variable. And I'm going to call that variable player character. And then we're going to have to do the same thing for on here noise. So essentially when we hear something or when we see something, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. And then we also want to do this in the event that we our enemy takes damage. So I'm going to grab all of our stuff over here for our event take damage. And from our event take damage, I'm going to drag out and I'm going to go ahead and add a sequence. And the first step in our sequence is going to be this check that we run. So I'm going to copy and paste this into place over here. So then one will go to our calculate health and the then zero will go to our branch. And I actually left a print string in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And so at this point, in the event that our character takes damage, if they see our character or they hear our character, it's going to check to see if it's in the combat status. If we're not already in the combat status, it's going to go ahead and set the player character and set our status to combat. And then of course, uh, I forgot over here, the damage instigator from our event take damage is going to need to get connected into our cast to our 3P player character. So that way, when we pass the information on who the instigator is, it's going to pull that information. If you remember when we did the weapons, when we spawn the weapon, we set the instigator to our player character. And when the weapon spawns the projectile, it sets the instigator to the player character reference that it carried over from the weapon. So at this point, we can go ahead and compile and save. And we can exit out of our enemy character. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back into our AI folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up our enemy AI controller. And in the event graph, we're going to have to run our behavior tree. So from event begin play, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to search for run behavior tree. And then for the BT asset, I'm going to select our enemy AI behavior tree. And we can go ahead and compile and save and close out of this. Next, I'm going to go ahead and open up our enemy AI behavior tree. And you'll notice to the right in the details plane, it's already going to show that the enemy AI blackboard has been selected. And you'll notice up to the top right here, we have both access to the behavior tree and the blackboard from the behavior tree. The blackboard is basically a place to hold variables for our behavior tree. So we're going to need to add a couple of variables to this. So I'm going to click on new key here and I'm going to select an enum. And sometimes this gets really finicky with adding these. It won't select it. So over to the right here, you can select the enemy AI blackboard and it's going to create the self actor. 
And after that, you should be able to add with no issues. So I'm going to add an enum key. And I'm going to call this enum key combat status. And then over to the right in the details, I'm going to expand the key type. And under enum type, I'm going to select our combat status enum. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new key. It's also going to be an enum. And this is going to be our combat type. And then once again, over to the right in the details pane, I'm going to expand key type. And for enum type, I'm going to set this to our combat type enum. Then I'm going to add a new key. And we're going to select an object. And I'm going to call this player character. And then to the right in the details pane under key type, I'm going to set the base class to be our 3P player character. And then I'm going to get rid of this uh, self actor here. And we can go ahead and save. And then we're going to go back to our behavior tree. And so now we're going to create the outline for our behavior tree on what we want everything to do. So from the root here, I'm going to drag out. And I'm going to select a selector. And what a selector is going to do is, based on specific conditions, it will run one of the branches that come off of the selector. So from our first selector, I'm going to drag off. And I'm going to go ahead and add a sequence. And what a sequence will do is it will run all of the tasks below it in order from left to right. So we're going to go ahead and right click on the sequence and we're going to add a decorator blackboard. And if we select our blackboard base condition decorator here, you'll notice on the right here for the blackboard, it has a key query. Uh, it's going to check a specific key value of our blackboard. And we want this to be set to the blackboard key of combat status. We want the key value to be guard and we want the key query to be as equal to. The one thing I do want to set here is under Observer Reports, I want to set it to Cell. And what this is going to do is when a sequence ends up running, it will run the entire sequence to the end, regardless of whether the Blackboard base condition has changed. But in the case of our first selection here, we want this to be our guard. So once the enemy character has detected the player, we want it to immediately abort out of this tree. And then for the node name at the bottom here, I'm going to call this guard. So now we know what this is, and it's easy to pick out. So from our first selector again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag out. And I'm going to add another sequence. And I'm going to once again right click. We're going to add a decorator blackboard. And I'm going to select the blackboard decorator. And once again, we want to set observer aborts to self. And then for the key query here, we want is equal to. We want the key value to be patrol. And then for the no name at the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and call this patrol. And one thing you'll notice that's really unusual is the order of the values in this blackboard here. It places the actual key that you're looking at underneath the key value, which I find really odd, but that's the way Epic decided to do it. So we're going to have to live with that. So you're going to have to make sure that the blackboard key is correct before you select the key value. In this case, you want to make sure it's combat status. So that way you can select the key value of patrol. Next, we're going to drag off of our initial selector again. And we're going to go ahead. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and add another selector. And we're going to right click on it. We're going to add a decorator blackboard. And for our blackboard base condition, we are going to make sure it's in the combat status. The key value is going to be combat. And for the node name, I'm going to call this combat. So now we have it set up so that we have a state for when our player is in guard, a state for when our character is in patrol, 
and our state when we're in combat. Now to expand on the combat a little bit more, and the reason I made this a selector, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag off of our combat node here. And we're going to add in a sequence. And we're going to right click and we're going to add a decorator blackboard. And we're going to select the blackboard decorator. And then we want the blackboard key to be set to combat type. And we'll set the first one to assault. And then for the node name, we'll simply call it assault. And then we'll go ahead and drag off of our combat selector. And we'll add in a new sequence. I'm going to right click, add a decorator blackboard. Select the blackboard base condition. And then we'll set the blackboard key to combat type. And we'll set the key value to cover. And then for the node name, I will call it cover. And then finally, I'll drag off one last time from our combat selector. We'll add a sequence. I'll right click, add a decorator blackboard. We'll select the blackboard base condition. Set the blackboard key to combat type and the key value to heavy. And we'll set the node name to heavy. So at this point, we have the top level framework for our behavior tree. And the first thing I want to add to this, to update the tree once we actually see the player character from our enemy character. So I'm going to go ahead and at the top here, I'm going to click on the new service button. And this is going to create a new service for us. So I'm going to go back to our main window here. And you'll notice that it automatically names it for us and it doesn't allow us to name it from the blueprint itself. So I'm going to select our new BTS service blueprint base and I'm going to go ahead and rename it. And I'm going to call this can see player underscore BTS. Now go back over to our can see player BTS. And so in our event graph here, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to right click. And I'm going to search for tick. And we're going to select the event receive tick AI. If you're using any of the blueprints within the behavior tree, you want to make sure that any of the events have that AI at the end of them in order for them to function properly. And what we want this blueprint to do is we want it to check whether or not we're in a combat status or what our combat status actually is. So from our event receive tick AI, we're going to drag off of our controlled pawn and we're going to cast to our base enemy. And then as our base enemy here, we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to want to get our combat status. And then we're going to want to set the value for the combat status on our blackboard so it's equivalent to the combat status in our enemy character. So I'm going to go to the left here and we're going to add a new variable. And I'm going to call this combat status. And for the variable type, we're going to search for a blackboard key selector. And we want to make this visible or public so that way we can set it up from the behavior tree itself and so we're going to drag out this reference and we're going to get it and from our combat status reference we're going to drag out and we're going to search for set as and we want to select the set blackboard value as a numerator and we can go ahead and connect this up and then we can plug our combat status into the value. And what this is going to do is it's going to set our blackboard combat status to the same as the combat status within our enemy character. The next value we want to go ahead and pass through is we're going to drag off our enemy character and we're going to go ahead and search for get player character. And this is going to be the reference that it picks up from its sight, sound, or taking damage. And we're going to go ahead and add a new variable to the left here. And I'm going to call this 
player character. And then for the variable type, once again, it's going to be a Blackboard key selector value. And we want to make it public as well. So we'll go ahead and drag out and get the reference to that player character value. And from here, we're going to drag out and we're going to set the Blackboard value. And we want to set it as an object. And we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And we're going to connect our player character reference to that value. And lastly, we're going to want to get from our enemy character the value of the combat type. So I'm going to drag off of our cast to the enemy character. And we're going to get combat type. And then we're going to create one last variable up here. And we're going to call this combat type. Once again, we'll make it public. We'll drag out and get our reference to combat type. Now for this one in particular, I'm going to drag off from our last set. And I'm going to perform a do once. Because we only need to check what kind of our enemy is one time. We don't need to continually update it. So I'm going to put a do once in place to make sure that this is only done once. So from our combat type here, I'm going to drag off and we're going to set as an enum. And we're going to connect our value from combat type into the value. And at this point, we can go ahead and compile and save. And we can go ahead and close out of our can see player BTS. And we're going to need to implement it in our behavior tree. So in our initial selector here, I'm going to go ahead and right click. And we're going to go ahead and add service. And we're going to add our can see player BTS. And one thing you're going to want to do every time you add a service in, is you're going to want to click on the service and over to the right it's going to have all those variables that we made public you're going to want to make sure that the value we're looking for is set correctly so it usually takes and fills it all in with the first key within our blackboard but as you see for the player character here it sets it as combat status that's not correct so we're going to have to switch it over to player character and then for combat type, we're going to have to set it to combat type as well. And one thing we're going to do while we're in here as well is we can complete our entire guard task set. From our guard sequence, we can simply drag off and search for wait. And that's going to put in a five second wait. And it's going to repeat the wait over and over and over again until it switches to a different state other than guard which in the case of him guarding a position, it's basically him just waiting there. So this in a nutshell is our entire guard AI branch. So that's gonna to complete today's video. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up the patrol. So when we drop our character into the environment, we can set his combat status to patrol and we're gonna add two points to the characters so that when he is in patrol mode, he is going to move back and forth between those two points. So if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them down below. And thanks for watching.